Hi everybody, so today we're going to be talking about something called brown saccard syndrome. And brown saccard is actually the name of the guy who discovered it. And this is what happens in this condition. You're going to get some type of damage to the spinal cord, usually on one side. It's going to be damage to one side of the spinal cord. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have different symptoms on different sides of the body. So on the same side, or what we call the ipsilateral side of the damage, we're going to see a loss of motor function. We're also going to see a loss of light touch sensation a loss of vibration sensation, and then conscious and unconscious proprioception. If you remember, proprioception is your body's awareness in space, okay? I'm gonna talk more about those in just a minute. On the opposite side of the body from where the damage is, on the contralateral side, you're gonna get a loss of pain, temperature, crude touch, and also unconscious proprioception on this side also. So if we look at this guy that's right over here, and we take a look at him, Here's what's going to happen. Let's say we get damage up here in the neck, right? This guy gets stabbed in the neck. Now, the most common cause of this, by the way, is trauma. So it could be car accidents, it could be stabs, it could be gunshot wounds, things such as that. But this can also occur due to things such as tuberculosis, multiple sclerosis, tumors, disc herniation. So there's all sorts of different things that can cause this. And there's about 11,000 new cases a year. The good thing is, most of the time, the people get better. From what I've read, it has about a 90% success rate that this will get better. But let's take a look at this really quick, and I'm gonna split this guy here in half, okay? So we're gonna have this guy split in half. This is gonna be the ipsilateral side, right? Because I have my damage up here. He got stabbed in the neck, right? That's gonna be the ipsilateral side. This is the contralateral side. So on this side here, what's going to happen from below that area now I'm going to get that loss of motor function, that loss of light touch, and then some loss of the conscious and unconscious proprioception at everywhere below where that damage happened, right? So if this is down lower, then like let's say the stab was down in here, then this stuff here would not suffer from that. It only goes from the area where the damage is down. On this side now, this person would have a loss of pain and temperature, crude touch, and some unconscious proprioception also going all the way down. So now, let's take a look at how this happened here. Now, what you're looking at here is this is looking at a person as if I'm facing towards you. This would be the brain here. This is going to be my brain. This is the pons, and, remember, uh, and pretend like the cerebellum is right behind that. I'm going to have my medulla oblongata, and then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have my neck, and my arms, obviously this is not the scale, and then the lower part of the body. So let's go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> so the first thing we're gonna talk about is we were talking about the loss of light touch and vibration and conscious proprioception on the ipsilateral side. So <clears throat> I'm gonna have a track here. It's gonna be a funiculus track. It's gonna go like this. It's gonna come in. It's gonna go into the spinal cord. It's going to go up into the medulla oblongata pass to the, or cross to the opposite side, then it's gonna go up into the thalamus and then to the cortex, okay? That's going to carry light touch, it's going to carry vibration, it's gonna do conscious proprioception, perception, and it's going to do, it's, it's also going to do two-point discrimination. Okay, so that's what that is going to do there. Let's go like this. Let's go conscious proprioception so I can give myself a little bit more room. So now, coming off of there and coming down, we're going to have another part. We're going to have the cortical spinal tract, and this is just to give you an idea. It's going to come down. It's going to cross at the medulla oblongata. Then it's going to come down like this. Then it's going to form a synapse. Okay, and then it's gonna go out, and this is going to do motor. All of this part here that you see, this is all of an upper motor neuron. So this is all upper motor neuron. This part that comes out here is going to be a lower motor neuron, but this is gonna be my corticospinal tract. And the corticospinal tract is going to do motor. And we're gonna talk more about this in just a minute. Now. You also have spinal cerebellar tracts, okay? And you, there's two that are gonna be involved here because I'm gonna pretend like this person's been stabbed in the neck in just a second. So 
you're going to have one that's basically going to do sensations from about C7 all the way up into the head, right? So that you're going to have that, and that's going to, that's going to be responsible for co unconscious proprioception in the hands. But you're also going to have a, what we call the dorsal spinal cerebellar tract, and that's going to do sensation between about um, C8 down to about L1 and L2, so about this area in here. I'm just going to draw this as one, as one portion, so just pretend it's two. Because uh, in actual, I should actually draw some coming up like this, but I'm just going to go like this just to give you the idea. And this is going to come up, and it's going to go into the cerebellum. That's why they call them spinal cerebellar tract, because they go from the spine into the cerebellum. And like we said, this is going to do motor. Motor is muscle movement, okay? So that's going to be my, this is going to be my spinal cerebellar. It's going to go like this, and then up into here. Okay, and it's going to do unconscious, unconscious proprioception. So let's talk real quick about the difference between conscious and unconscious proprioception. Unconscious proprioception, signals are sent up to the cerebellum all the time, basically helping you keep your balance and keeping your eyes level and things such as that. When you walk, you don't have to pay attention to keeping your balance. When you sit, you don't have to pay attention to keeping your balance. That's due to unconscious proprioception. That's due to the spinal cerebellar tract sending signals up to the cerebellum, and then you keep your balance, right? Conscious proprioception. If I were to ask you right now without looking, where's your right arm, you, could, you would know where it's at without thinking about it. That's conscious proprioception. If you, let's say you're sitting at, at home watching TV, and your cell phone rings, and you start reaching for your cell phone, right? You start reaching for your cell phone. Even though you're not looking at it, you know where your arm is at as you feel around. That's conscious proprioception, okay? So here's what's going to happen now. Let's say this person gets stabbed in the right side of their neck, okay? If they get stabbed in the right side of the neck, and let's say this is right about here, what's going to happen now? A few things. One, they're going to lose, if you notice, this track goes like this, and then it goes up. But here's the lesion now. Here's the problem. It can't get past there. So now they've lost the sensation of light touch. If someone were to come and rub their skin, they wouldn't feel it. They're going to lose the sensation of vibration. They're going to lose that conscious proprioception. So if, they, if you were to ask them where their arm is at, they could not tell you where it's at, right? They're going to lose all of that. But they're also going to lose motor. And again, this is on the ipsilateral side. It's the same side as the lesion. They're also going to lose, have a loss of motor. They're not going to have, they're going to have trouble either uh, they're going to have trouble moving their muscles, or they won't move it, be able to move them at all. And like I said, this is an upper motor neuron that's coming like this. And here's the lesion. Now, I don't have it drawn, but you have to imagine you have nerves coming out from here, just like you do here, right? You have nerves coming out from here. So at the level of where this happens, at the level of where this happens, we're going to have symptoms. We're going to have a loss of motor control, but these symptoms are going to be lower motor neuron lesion symptoms, okay? Loss of motor control. But in this case, what's going to happen is that you'll get things such as the reflexes won't work. They'll get flaccid paralysis at this level. It's a loss of motor control. However, below that, that's at the level of the lesion. Below the level of the lesion, they, I still have this upper motor neuron going down. I'm going to get upper motor neuron symptoms below the level of the lesion. So now it's going to be upper motor neuron sim symptoms, right? Again, it's going to be a loss of function for both of these, but the way that this is different is now my reflexes are going to be hyper reflexive, right? If you test the reflexes, they're going to be hyper. You're also going to get a hypertonic type of paralysis, such as a spastic paralysis coming from here. And the other thing that would happen is you're going to get a positive Babinski sign. So we have loss of motor control, but it's going to be, the symptoms are going to be two different things depending on where that's at. So we also said that we're going to get loss of sensation on the other side. So let's go over to the other side here. And you actually have another track over here. And we're going to call this the, la spinal, the lateral spinal thalamic track. It's going to be over here. And what you'll notice about this track is it crosses to the other side. Now this one's responsible for feel, feeling pain and temperature. Right? And then some books will even say it does crude touch, so we'll lose crude, crude touch. But here's my lateral spinal thalamic tract here, and then it heads up, right? 
and it's going to go up into the up into the brain here, right? But if we so if I, if I were to get any type of pain or temperature sensation, it comes this way, crosses to the opposite side. It usually goes up one or two levels and then crosses. But it's going to go up and then into the brain. But now we have this lesion, so that pain and temperature sensation comes over here, and then it can't get past that lesion. So now the people can't feel pain and temperature on the contralateral side. All of this stuff is on the ipsilateral side. This is on the contralateral side. Let's take a look at something else. Down here in the legs, you have another part of that spinal cerebellar tract. Okay? And it's, this is called the ventral spinal cerebellar tract. And this is also going to be responsible for unconscious proprioception. But this is going to do, this is going to do unconscious proprioception basically down into the legs. Proprioception. Right? So we get unconscious proprioception. This is going to basically be from this area about L2 going down into the legs. Okay? Now, the difference between this and the spinal cerebellar tracts over here is this one crosses to the opposite side and then it heads up. Right? Then it's going to head up, but once it hits this lesion, it can't go up any further. So we're going to lose unconscious proprioception on the contralateral side of the body, right? On the contralateral side of basically the legs, right? On that side. So now when you go to walk, your, your brain or your, won't know where your legs are or where your leg on the contralateral side is, and you won't be able to walk. It won't know how to move it, right? So you, you get that pro, that's some of the problems there. Or if you try to stand, your, your body won't know where that leg is, and it makes it difficult to stand. However, on this side, what's going to happen is it crosses and it goes up. And as you can see now, it's not going to get caught in that lesion. It's just going to continue up into the cerebellum, right? By the way, everything I was talking about here, remember, it's on the other side too, so I would still have all of these sensations on the other side, okay? I also have my unconscious proprioception here, so this part would still be working too. So that's it for the spinal, I'm sorry, that's it, that's it for brown Sicard syndrome. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button and we will catch you next time.